fear. We grow up with it. That's how life is here. Knowing that everything you love could be ripped away in an instant. But one day, I decided that I would never live in fear again. Why are you considered an adversary? Smoke from the haters, that's all imaginary. I guarantee I won't have the yip in the crown I carry. So bow your heads when you're in the press, that's legendary. 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 That's what makes you dangerous, Rico. You are just like me. Gabriela Morales commands the Black Hand. If we go to war with her, you won't be enough. How's it feel? Having an army. He's growing on me. You're in the presence of legendary! Understand why all this talking is necessary. Why you exchange the heated vocabulary? I guarantee I won't have to get in the crowd I carry. So bow your heads when you're in the presence of legendary. Why are you consider me necessary? Smoke from the haters, that's all imaginary. I guarantee I won't have to get in the crowd I carry. So bow your heads when you're in the presence of legendary. So, uh, we start this presentation today uh, from this panoramic spot in Solis uh, that gives you a pretty good idea of the extent of the world. Everything is procedurally generated, everything is there uh, for your use, for use, and to just have fun with those. Uh, let's just jump down the cliff. Needless to say, uh, both uh, Parachute and Wingsuit are back. We know how much you did love those in the previous games, so we did the extra effort uh, to perfect them uh, even more. Uh, we improved the interaction model and we've polished the uh, animation and the way that Rico relates to his... So it's pretty colorful, and the reason is uh, that this plane was actually belonging to the Black Hand, so it was looking quite badass black and red, but you are me to control of it, and it just graffitied and made it fun. Uh, those are there to advise player about playable content that is nearby. Now they're gonna get less and less because they're gonna go up in the air. But the point is that Solis is not only the biggest world we craft so far, he's also the most rich in terms of things to do. So that widget, it's gonna alert player whether there is something to do for the revolution or for a secondary character or for a main story uh, and so on. So uh, as Brian is flying over the desert, uh, you may notice that there is a certain uh, a variation in the landscape itself. Like now, we are just welcoming a mine. Welcome the mine. Ooh, that it's, uh, you can tell it's desert, but it's not really desert. It looks and feels different. This is one of those things that we call sub-biomes. And uh, we need to use these to infuse variety within the biomes itself, because again, they are big. If they were all looking samey, uh, you will be bored pretty soon, and I don't want that. We just want you, we just want to give you surprise after surprise. There's the sensor. I did promise before that we would have passed nearby. I hope we don't end inside it, because one of the features of the, sen of the sandstorm itself is that it drastically reduces your visibility. That is quite interesting uh, is the canyon that goes uh, with uh, a river uh, at the bottom. Now, the world is big, and it's big not just for the sake of being big, it's big because Rico moves fast. He moves fast if he's in a vehicle, he moves fast if he's in his wingsuit, and he basically teleports himself every time that he fires his grappling hook. So we literally need ground to cover. This time around, we also built it differently. They look and feel different. They also play different. The biome literally structure your gameplay space. So let's say driving on the desert through the dunes is a completely different feeling than driving on the rainforest, where it's kind of hard to get off-road because you've got trees everywhere. Now think a bit about it. This also means that the moment that you are chased by the black hand, the strategies that you're going to employ in the desert are completely different from the one that you're going to employ in the grassland. 
the alpine uh, or the rainforest. It's like having four games uh, uh, in one. This is one of the uh, of the town that I love the most. It's uh, inspired by Huacachina, that's a town in Peru, an oasis. Vehicles, things that are built in a way that can interact meaningfully with them. So even if you take just a otherwise insignificant fuel, uh, sorry, food cart, here it is that with the addition of just a propane tank, you can make it interesting uh, once you interact, you know, with uh, airlifter, booster, or somebody else. So. We got the airlifter attached to a red barrel. The jet up there, it could have very easily gone onto that. And now the airlifter is following Rico, wherever he goes. So Brian has just built a cloud of red barrels. What do you do with a cloud of red barrels? You rain explosions, right? Now, we've seen a food cart, we've seen a cloud of red barrel. Let's see. Let's approach one of those objects where we actually put a lot, lot more love than anything else. We call them the chaos objects, because when you destroy them, you accrue chaos, because chaos is bad, and in a meaningful way, the GC2 way, not the GC3 one. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more uh, about it in a second. So look at this, uh, this is a radar. However, when we saw these, uh, everybody in the studio thought, oh, it looks like a catapult. So you probably think that too. And uh, if you as my player think that, I don't want to frustrate you. So I want for this thing to actually work. And uh, I guess what we've created, it's a flying deck. So what's interesting here is that the player, Brian, there is still driving the tank. And this is, uh, since we have engineered the control so that you can use your grappling hook attachments even when you are driving vehicles. At the same time, uh, you can see this updraft. Uh, wind is a big component of the game, and you know for sure if you've seen the tornado video. Uh, we don't have only destructive wind, there is just wind that brings you around the world, and there is what we call mechanical wind, like this one. I love this because it allows me to over in my parachute, over the base, and rain that from above. Uh, let's see what happens if we shoot the wing gun now. Fire it now. Rico gets propelled. And this is kind of a testament to how deep and coherent uh, the physics model is. Now, this said, uh, uh, I want to start a bit from uh, a mission, and uh, you may of a lightning storm and uh, of a black hand attack. And what we are asking the player to do, we are asking the player to ride three lightning rods so that they will attract lightning and make the area secure for Rico and his army. So let me tell you something about the extreme weather. Uh, there were three principles that we were following uh, when engineering uh, and designing each one. Uh, not an easy challenge, and each extreme weather event achieves it uh, in a different way. So I'm gonna tell you how we did that uh, with the lining, and this discovery is going to hopefully help you to make sense of uh, control when a lightning strike. Let's say if it works, the ladder should hit the chopper, and indeed, it did hit uh, the chopper. And uh, I could definitely watch this going on for hours and hours, as for the flying tanks, but again, we don't have hours and hours, so I apologize about that. Uh, but getting to conclusion, uh, uh, we just played for 15 minutes, I believe, but we've seen quite a lot of things. We've seen Solis and uh, Solis, sorry, and hopefully now you have a better idea of what the extent and the variety of the world uh, are. Desert. Uh, we had no desert in Just Cause 3. Indeed, something that uh, player lamented was uh, that there was not enough variety and feeling of discovery. So we really pushed on that. And now we got a desert, but we also have a rainforest, uh, an alpine region, and grasslands. 早速まあこれまあ舞台のソリスの中なんですけれども、まずはこの砂漠から今始めています。そしてまあ前回には砂漠なかったんですけれども、今回あのいろんなこの天候じゃだけじゃなくてあのいろんなあの地域を追加している
they, they tell the player about things that you can do around you. Like now we are going to collect a speed ring. もちろんそういったところだけではなくてですねあの今画面左上の方にいろんなアイコンが切り替わっていたと思うんですけれどもあれはこうサイドミッションみたいなものを今あの表示していて今ちょうど。And so the four biomes, as you can see here in the video plane, we've got a desert biome, we have a rainforest, grasslands, and an alpine region. And we also have two to three sub biomes. Those biomes、uh, are these transitionary areas between、uh, the different regions. Again, we go in for that variety as you're wingsuiting through the world to make sure everything feels very fresh and different. Well, I mean, I'm sorry, I've got distracted by this amazing、yeah. mural that we're watching. <laughs> Um, so pretty. Obviously, you know, Just Cause is known for these massive open worlds and traversal, and vehicles are coming back in a really big way. Omar, what, is, what are some of the cool things that I'm going to get to drive? I mean, we have all kinds of new vehicles this time.、Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's one、yeah. up in the air、oh, yeah. uh, being airlifted by our new grappling hook.、Uh, we have industrial vehicles, we have sports muscle vehicles,、uh, obviously, we have jets, helicopters. Lions, tigers, bears, oh my. Uh, <laughs> but uh, the most interesting thing about all the vehicles this time around is that they all have some sort of secondary functionality. So our, we have like heavy loaders, dump trucks, uh, uh, magnetized sky cranes where you can pick things up、uh, and bring them to one side of the world.、Um, <laughs> it kind of goes on and on and on. But yeah, variation is a big theme of Just Cause 4. So、um, what a, a device or a vehicle primarily does. It always comes with some sort of secondary function. So you can discover that as you play the game. And I'm guessing that secondary function is usually in service of blowing things up or throwing things around, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or taking care of lawn maintenance.、Uh, that helps too. You know. Sure, mowing lawn. <laughs> yeah, the grasslands, rainforest, that needs to happen. <laughs> We're seeing a little bit of weather in this clip that's on screen right now. You guys have like a whole new systemic weather system in Just Cause 4. Yeah, that's right. So, with each of these biomes, we wanted to bring an extreme weather for Rico to play around in. Here, we're showing off our lightning storm.、Uh, basically, because the game is so vertical, we wanted to give some really fun challenges to players on how they handle that verticality when they've got this extreme weather going on. And all of these、uh, weather types, we have a Uh, we showed the tornado previously, of course.、Uh, here's our lightning storm. We've got a couple of things、uh, as well in the other regions. But these are actually weather simulations based off of real weather systems. <laughs> Super real. Very realistic, yeah. Very real. Super real. <laughs> That's how weathermen do it. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah,、uh, and so again, all of these are systemic. So、uh, if you think, you know, like lightning should function where it hits the highest point, that means it probably will. And that's how all of our weather systems, and we try really hard with all of our physics systems、uh, to keep true to that. And you guys have this awesome Apex engine that you guys have created specifically for this.、Um, can you tell us a little bit about how that engine works and why it makes this awesome destruction and chaos possible? Yeah. Sure. The, so the Apex engine is sort of like the culmination of 15 years of open world sandbox experience. Welcome to Spotlight. This is a video series where we take a closer look into a different aspect of Just Cause 4. If you're looking for fresh information and sneak peeks on gameplay, you have come to the right place. For our first episode, we're focusing on the rich, bustling world of Solis. And the gargantuan biomes, intricate sub biomes, and of course, extreme weather. It's time to take a tour of the huge world that you'll be exploring as of December 4th. The world of Solis. Taking inspiration from South America, Solis is the most diverse and memorable landscape that Just Cause has ever had. There's a vast array of unique landmarks that you can discover and explore. It is incredibly tempting to take a buggy ride through the dusty desert at sunset, or hike up a humid hill in the rainforest and simply get lost in the gorgeous atmosphere. Avalanche Studios have really gone back to the roots of Just Cause and now has a map that will excite your curiosity no matter where you look. This rich South American inspired setting introduces four distinct biomes comprising of rainforest, grasslands, desert, and alpine. 
how do these different biomes alter the way you play? These biomes have various vertical opportunities. Plateaus, mountains and canyons mix up the terrain. They also need to cater to places where it's fun to drive and use the new vehicles. From rolling hills to sand dunes to a brand new interstate with no speed limits. So, let's explore each biome. Heavily inspired by the Andes, the alpine biome is harsh and hostile. If you're trying to beat that personal best for the longest continuous wingsuit run, the alpine is the place to trial it. The feeling of flying through a freezing valley and being totally encapsulated by towering mountains is an unrivaled sensation and a distinctly different experience from any other part of the world. The twisting roads make for an interesting journey by car, but you've got to give the snowmobile a go and smash through the snowy plains. There's even a unique train journey that chugs along the rail tracks. Why not hop aboard? This extreme weather in the Alpine region comes in the form of roaring blizzards. Fierce winds and strict visibility makes for one mean weather type. Here we are in the tropical, humid lands of the rainforest. It's massive and is actually the largest of all the regions in Just Cause 4. With various layers to its canopy, this will alter the way you move around the biome. The thick pockets of forest means wingsuiting through the midsection will be difficult. So instead of flying low, stretch up high above the canopy for a more open, easier way to travel. The boundless trees are a great option to use when grappling onto and initially lifting yourself up into the sky. The extreme weather type that roams the rainforest biome are the tropical storms. These storms are daunting, green-tinged pockets of destruction, with fault lightning that will strike the highest point in the sky. Now we're taking a trip to the calm, serene climate of the grasslands. This biome takes its inspiration from the Pampas in Argentina, but has been injected with true just cause verticality and is mostly developed towards agriculture with stretches of corn, wheat and other grains. This is the most populated part of Solis, with everything from vast cities and towering skyscrapers to bustling farmlands and fields. Driving the buggy or the ATV over these hills is insanely fun. Even sticking to the roads is a blast with the interstate, where you can race in supercars thanks to no speed limit. And I hope you're ready to take tons of screenshots, because the vistas from the highlands of the rest of Solis are truly some of the most stunning views in the entire game. You could argue that the extreme weather in the grasslands needs no introduction. One word, tornadoes. The devastating, swirling vortex lives in the valleys and will consume, destroy, and rip up anything in its path. Once lush grasslands have since dried out and have turned into a hostile and dry wilderness. The smallest of all the biomes, it is a mixture between areas of smooth sand dunes and rougher, rockier bands. It almost looks like an alien planet, a whole new world. The wide open spaces, few roads and drifting sand dunes are perfect for a cross-country buggy ride across the desert. Of course, this being Just Cause 4, you can attach some boosters on the back for rocket-fast transportation. In the desert, we don't need roads, you make your own path. <laughs> The open desert is also an air vehicle playground, so feel free to use helicopters and planes wherever you want. As all the biomes, the desert is also a great example of finding curiosities in all directions. It begs the question, 
Where do I go next? The answer is entirely up to you. This extreme weather type affects visibility massively. It's very hard to see who you're fighting, where you're driving, and what you're doing. Hello, I'm Omar Shakir, the Narrative Director at Avalanche Studios New York, working on Just Cause 4. In our new game, Rico Rodriguez will hunt down the truth about his past on this fictional South American world of Solis. You'll still use Rico's wingsuit and parachute for traversal, but now we've added new wind currents. They enable you to glide through the world wherever you see them. Let's take a look at Rico's new grappling hook. All of its functionality from the previous games returns, but we've added multiple new features, including the ability to customize different loadouts. In our current setup, we have a powerful charge pulse that blasts objects apart when they meet. A major addition to the grappling hook is the ability to attach multiple airlifters to any object in our game. At the press of a button, the player can disable all airlifters, sending objects crashing back down to the ground. The boosters are back, but this time you can fire them from the grappling hook to remotely and precisely place them wherever you want. Let's get creative and use a combination of the boosters and airlifters. For example, we've taken a crane and cargo container and turned them into a rocket-powered wrecking ball. As you know, everything in Just Cause is always driven by physics. But in Just Cause 4, we've given you freedom that you've never experienced before. Now, by adding more airlifters and changing the placement of the boosters, we've made something completely different out of the same shipping container. A makeshift Zeppelin. Now, let's jump right into the action and check out some of the more extreme parts of the open world. In this mission, Rico's pursuing a massive tornado as it weaves a path of destruction throughout the grasslands. And this is the Storm Chaser, the only vehicle that allows him to do so. All right, let's see what this thing can do. Thanks to Avalanche's new Apex engine, everything you see, as well as the trajectory of every spiraling object, is being calculated in real time. Take the storm chaser and get out of here. I'll get the tornado back on track. The Black Hand have taken over Solis's private airport. And to progress, Rico must take out the wind cannons that are holding the tornado at bay. Adios. The player can take out the wind cannons in any way they choose. Right now we're using the railgun, one of the many new weapons in the game. And all these new weapons have a secondary fire option, 
So in this case, the railgun can shoot a powerful beam of energy, and it can also deploy a drone that will fight alongside Rico. You can even use this drone as a grapple point to propel yourself into the air. For the next cannon, let's get more creative and use some new features of Rico's grappling hook. That's all we're going to show today. It's just a small glimpse of what to expect in Just Cause 4. And there's plenty more to come when you play yourself on December 4th. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. No, 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 not at all. Um, but yeah, in general, what we focus on is giving players the ability to do the things that they want to do. And uh, I think one of the highest compliments we got paid in the past was that if you think you can do it, you probably can. And when you do it, it looks good. So we really took that as kind of the heart of a lot of our methodology going into nice. this one. So how does yeah. your team continue to craft these giant, massive open worlds that we just love playing in? Uh, well, we have the Apex engine. That's a kind of a new update here with Just Cause 4. That's given us the, certainly the physics horsepower that we need to be able to accomplish a game like this, have a tornado lifting 747s off the ground and breaking them into pieces. And then you can tether to it and all that. <laughs> of course you can. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> yeah absolutely. Of course. Because. But, uh, you know, of course. And, uh, if you haven't heard that one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, um, no, you know, yeah, <laughs> I forgot where I was going because I made a joke. Uh, no, but the joke was worth it. I know. Worth it to interrupt your thought. <laughs> but yeah, ultimately, yeah, we took the, uh, the engine, we massively upgraded it, we allow for physics interactions like we've never had before, and with that we're allowed to do things, you know, that we've ne you know, not been able to accomplish in the past. I remember that's kind of a feeling that I think a lot of Just Cause fans had, especially in the second one, that mm -hmm. first moment that you really get to see, oh, this whole space is playable. And yeah. your transition between ground combat, aerial combat, driving, walking, diving, parachuting, all of it, you know, the team at Avalanche just blended that all together perfectly. And that yeah. seems like that you guys are driving that and enhancing that for this one, right? Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, it, the, one of the mottos at the studio is if you can see it, you can go there. And if you can go there, you can poke it. And if you poke it, it's going to react. <laughs> I like so, uh, <laughs> you, yeah. Did you engrave that in wood somewhere? No, we actually, that is actually a motto for us. I love and, it. I love it. Sign me up for that. And so it was important that while you're doing that, if the experience that you want is to drive around, we want to make that experience excellent. We want the car handling and the, the helicopters to behave the way you want them to, and we want to load them up with weapons so you can blow things up, because blowing things up is sort of at the heart of what we do. Yeah, it's on Rico's yeah. business card, yeah. <laughs> yeah. blowing things, things up. up. Yeah. Yeah. So what were some of the lessons that you learned from Just Cause 3 that you're bringing over to Just Cause 4? Uh, sure. Uh, you know, in general, we watched a lot of players online. It, and, you know, that's kind of going into this era now. There's uh, all these streamers and, and YouTubers and all that that allow us to kind of see the way players are playing in, in a much bigger sample size. And so we used a lot of that. And then we also paid a lot of attention both to the reviews, but also the comments uh, that we were seeing as we went. And the design team are a bunch of maniacs and actually built like a giant spreadsheet that aggregated and weighted all these different feedback points. And we identified what we felt were some of the biggest things. Whoa. And, uh, and then also through just our own observation. So once we did that, we kind of you know, rested into saying, like, we need to give them more options. We need to give them more ways to interact with the world. Uh, sometimes that's the grapple hook with all the new customization that comes with it. But it's also things like vehicles that do things that we've not been able to do in the past, like a forklift that can just flip things over, or a crane, you know, magnet crane. Um, and so we've really expanded almost everything we do and bring as much variety as possible. And that was, that was one criticism we had, was it was kind of one world, one environment. Uh, now you have four distinct biomes that all have very unique gameplay to themselves. That's awesome. Creativity runs through in your development team. Oh, fun. yeah. I can't believe that spreadsheet story. That's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. No, you, you wouldn't believe the spreadsheet. Yeah, I know. I, yeah. I bet it took up a lot of space. <laughs> it um, was. 
T tell me a little bit about the world progression. We were talking about that um, backstage, that that's something that kind of has been in the Just Cause series to sort of make progress in the world and either take down a dictatorship or right. cause chaos. I mean, what does that system look like in Just Cause 4? In Just Cause, uh, so we had a system in, in Just Cause 3 where you would liberate bases and kind of progress your, your objectives. But it didn't really manifest or render much. You didn't see the world change much aside from maybe that town suddenly looked liberated. Uh, instead, we want to give a sense that there is a war going on this time, and you are advancing that war. So we have a new frontline system where as you progress and take over areas, you're going to see that battle continue through the world, and you'll see guys fighting against each other, and it will always be there. And so there was a perpetual front line running across the entire world that you can go and interact with. It's not just like a piece of VFX or something. It's soldiers and tanks. And, and then as you liberate bases, it has a tangible effect on what your army is able to do. They, if you liberate a tank base, suddenly they're going to be able to have tanks because they weren't before because they're a rebel army. They don't have nothing to start. So uh, we wanted to kind of really make that not only just a system that moved you through the game, but something that showed that you are, in fact, liberating this nation. That's awesome. This, this trailer's bonkers, by the way. Sorry I interrupted <laughs> your mind. Crazy. Um, can, I, can I just ask real quick, uh, when you guys are putting all this stuff together, did you find that there were any technical or creative hurdles that your team faced, and how did you overcome those? Does anything stand out during the development period? Sure. I mean, uh, we, the, as you can see, the physics interactions in our game are absolutely over the top, and uh, we kind of recognized we needed to add more muscle and more horsepower to what we were doing, so that's kind of where the Apex engine came in. And that's what allows us to do this right here with, uh, with a giant tornado. And that's not a piece of VFX. That's not just like a special effect that looks cool and gives atmosphere and mood to the game. That is actually picking up 747s and tearing them apart. It's actually picking up vehicles. Enemies react to it. Uh, we even had a guy kind of claw across the ground as he was getting sucked up into it. That's, that's terrible. That, <laughs> I wanted to be believable. Yeah, yeah. But very believable. No one, so, no one is relaxed getting sucked into yeah, it. Yeah, well, tornado. and also it's all a game. Yeah, right? it's all in fun. Right. No so real was, tornadoes were used in nope. the creation of Just Cause. So if you could only pick one of the new features that you're most excited about players getting their hands on, which one would it be? Um, for me, it's the grapple hook, because I think that's where uh, we give a lot of expression and creativity to the player. Um, we, you know, if you, there's a, it's not just a matter of, can I shoot all these guys and empty this base out? It's, we almost, in a way, kind of look at it like a skateboarding game, mm -hmm. where it's not, can I grind down this rail? Mm. It's, how dope can I go down this rail? And so we try to give you as many ways to, like, I can take this base in any of 50 different ways, but what if I put a bunch of airlifters onto a thing loaded with explosives and drop it into the center of the, the enemies and then suddenly kind of take it from there. You know, it, the, all of that is possible. It's really up to your imagination and what you can, the, the combinations on the hook are in the thousands. It's, someone it, told me the number once and I can't even remember it. it I need you to remember it right now. No, <laughs> uh, no, no, but before you go, before we sure. start wrapping up, I have to ask one more thing and that is, of all the insane stunts that appear on YouTube for this game and right. on ver other very... Welcome to Just Cause 4 and the return of Rico Rodriguez, a rogue agent on a mission that'll challenge everything and everyone he knows. Rico has arrived in the fictional South American country of Solis, the largest and most breathtaking world we've ever created. Every journey into Solis will uncover history, secrets, and danger. Never before has a Just Cause game offered greater variety, rich in all forms of life. At first glance, Solis is a beautiful location, but scratch the surface and you will uncover oppression, fear, and violence, all enforced by Gabriella, the leader of the private militia organization, The Black Hand. Just Cause 4 takes destruction and physics simulation to a whole new level with the introduction of Extreme Weather. Experience towering tornadoes that can tear trees from the ground and level bridges to sticks. Awesome forked lightning, unpredictable and deadly sandstorms, and roaring blizzards. Witness the spectacular destruction as they offer both a challenge to Rico, as well as creating fun opportunities for creative sandbox gameplay. 
our vehicles have been totally overhauled with new additions that offer extra gameplay opportunities. Bulldozers, car transporters, cranes, and even wrecking balls are all fun in our world. We have new handling on bikes and cars, as well as exotic vehicles like jet skis and micro jets. Rico's grapple is now fully customizable and has been overhauled to make it more intuitive for newcomers while offering greater depth for a more experienced player. The grapple now has more tethers than ever before and the ability to deploy booster rockets in the all-new airlifters, making the grapple an incredibly powerful and creative tool. Meanwhile, a new story glues together our free-form, go-anywhere, do-anything gameplay that Just Cause is so famous for and the stakes for Rico have never been higher. <laughs> Combat in Just Cause 4 is better than ever. Enemies now present a far more intelligent threat to Rico. Each archetype comes with unique abilities, with AI designed to keep the player on their toes. So Lise is a deeply advanced systemic world everything you've seen from the incredible physicalized destruction to unparalleled draw distance is powered by the brand new best-in-class open world apex engine welcome to just cause 4. I was born to fight wars that no army could win. There was no fear, no failure. But the rules have changed. The enemy changed. And no one was ready for it. The Black Hand. They are the world's most powerful private army. But even they should fear what they've created. This isn't a war, Rico. This is survival. Getting shot at? All the time. Make no mistake! Make no mistake! What a run is 